Hello and welcome to another video from the Marketing Study Guide. In this video, we're going to have a look at what is the disjunctive decision rule in consumer behavior and how consumers make decisions. My name's Jeff and I'm a long-term marketing lecturer and practitioner. Now to make sense of this, where does the decision rules fit in for consumers? No doubt you've seen the buyer decision process going from need recognition, gathering information, and we go over here before we make our purchase decision, we evaluate alternatives. So the decision rules fit in right here. Now we have a choice of what's called compensatory, fairly analytical type decision making or non-compensatory, which is where we look at selective attributes only. And today we're going to have a look at the disjunctive rule. And keep in mind, I have videos explaining all of these rules individually. Now to help us, we're going to use this scoring table or a compensatory model. Um, and we're going to refer to this when we make our decision rule. So I'll come back to this, but you can see it's four hotels that we're thinking about going to. The attributes that we're looking at, an importance rating out of 10. And uh, each hotel is then scored out of 10 from the consumer's perspective. And the higher the score, uh, the better perceived quality. So what is the disjunctive decision rule? This is where we are looking for one particular attribute uh, that will work for us. Okay, so we're willing to accept that it is unlikely that the offering after will have everything we need. So we're going, if it's got a fantastic swimming pool, that'll be a good hotel. If it's got a fantastic view, that'll be a good hotel. If it's got a fantastic level of service, that's a good hotel. So we're actually trying to limit down the set. Okay, so we select two or more attributes and we want one of them at least, or the attributes, to be really good. Okay, so we typically set our expectations quite high and we're using our own perception. Okay, so to make sense of it, we're going to use two examples for two consumers. The first consumer wants to score 9 out of 10 for either having spacious rooms or having great service. And consumer B wants a 10 out of 10 score for one of these, near the beach, city, big city, or good views. So we go back to our, our table here. And consumer A, spacious rooms, service levels, 9 plus. So we go through spacious rooms. The only one that has that is hotel C. The rest are below 9, so we rule them out. Then we look at service level. Unfortunately, um, None of the hotels score 9 out of 10, which means just the basis of those two alone, the only suitable hotel option for this consumer is Hotel C. Neither of these, A or B, and certainly D, they do not meet their expectations on those two attributes. Hotel C's got great spacious rooms, service level's not so good, but we go, hey, going to have a great room, looking forward to the holiday. Okay, let's now have a look at consumer B. They're after those three attributes. So the first one, near the beach, 10 out of 10. Remember, this, this consumer wants 10 perfect scores. Big city, no, a 9. Not good enough for this consumer in this occasion. But then we have good views, 10 and 10. We've got two hotels listed. And that means that in this case, using this particular rule, either Hotel C or a Hotel D is an acceptable choice. Now, most likely they'll go for hotels, Hotel uh, D because it's got a nine there. But the way this works is we, we're trying to limit the choice and does it perform well, like really well on one particular attribute. Both hotels have great views and this one also has near the beach. But in the way this decision-making works, we would scale our choice down. We'd rule out A, we'd rule out B, and we're now down to Hotel C and D. Okay, so one of the problems with the disjunctive rule and the conjunctive rule as well, as I've just shown you, is we don't have necessarily a clear choice. So it's usually used as a way of getting from a lot of brands down to a smaller set of brands. And then from there, we typically use another decision rule. An easy way to recall the, the term disjunctive is use the word dish and, and the term at the start and then turn it into disconnected, which means the attributes are not interrelated. 
we're after one attribute. There's no connection between them. It could be that one, or it could be that one, or it could be that one. Okay, hopefully that helps you. Remember, there are other videos to have a look at covering the uh, various decision rules in consumer behavior.